what is this? This is a half double A battery and it came out of that, that Mac SE. So this video is about preservation. So that Mac SE is mine. I've had it for a couple of years now and I realized that I don't get to use it as much as I want to, but like many older computers, there are batteries on board that are used to keep the uh, contents of memory or just the CMOS battery, clocks, whatever. It keeps them uh, current. The problem is these batteries, as they get older, tend to leak all over the main board, motherboard, logic board, whatever you want to call it in these computers. And when that happens, it can at times just completely destroy that board. So we want to go ahead and get that battery out of that Mac SE. And uh, I'm going to show you how we did it. So stay tuned. So today we're going to look at this Mac SE that I have here. This is the FDHD designation on the bottom. And I'm really quickly, I don't use this computer too much yet. So what I want to do just in case is take the battery out, which more than likely is probably not good anymore as the computer does not hold uh, the proper time once it's off and unplugged. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy up and uh, take the battery out. But just to show first that it does work perfectly fine, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. This keyboard here is definitely not the original. I believe this from a is from a Mac Performer. As is the mouse. But as you can see, it does boot pretty quickly right up to the basic uh, desktop here. And if we look at the uh, about. This is running Finder 6.1, System 603. It has one mega RAM. And I believe this has the 20 meg hard drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back off. That's pretty quick. Just for a quick tour on the back of the machine, we have the two Apple desktop bus ports, floppy drive port, SCSI port, printer, communications or modem port, and a headphone port. As far as taking the screws out of this, there are one, two Torx bits right there. T15 Torx, which would use this type of screwdriver. However, up top here, there are two recessed screws that are gonna require a longer bit I did recently get to do this job. So yeah, that is a close-up of the T15 bit. Always have something good to keep the bits in. Uh, I use one of these magnetic trays to uh, keep the screws in as I'm working on stuff. Now, as for the two longer screws, they are indeed way down there. So we're gonna get the longer bit now. You have this handy bit kit, which lots of bits in it, but this one here with the long extension is what we're gonna need to get those screws out. Of course, it is hard to see down here, so just gonna feel until you feel like the bit's in there. Always have something soft to put these Macs down on as the screen does protrude from the case and you'll scratch the screen on it not so uh, nice surface. So with that out of the way, we should be able to pull the case open now. Normally they used to sell what's called a Mac cracker tool, which one had the long bit on one side, the other side had a thing that would fit in the seam down here that kind of cracked this loose. So let's see if we can get this guy loose. And we're gonna need both hands, so down goes the camera. Be very careful taking the bits out and don't be like me and drop them. 
luckily we were able to get them off the floor. So as far as the battery goes, the battery is roughly on the main board under here. But to get there, we have to take off these ribbon connectors and slide it out from the back. And as always, be careful for high voltage parts. This piece comes off here. And the battery is right around here on the other side. As you can see, the motherboard is held on by these same clamps that are held on with the screw that goes to the bottom. Let's go ahead and get those ribbon connectors off. I will say how clean this machine is, despite the fact that it is over 20 years old. It's not just some dust in the fan. So whoever had this before, I got this off a guy that wasn't using it for a long time, and it was definitely well taken care of. It smells pretty new inside, despite the case yellowing. So I got the two ribbon connectors off. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this board slightly up. And then once it's in these grooves, it should come right out. You also have to get the power connector off, which I did forget. If you take off this bracket, it's gonna make it a lot easier. All right, so with that bracket removed, now I can actually get my hand in here to get the rest of the uh, power connector off. And the motherboard or logic board is out. The speaker wire from the front is still connected here. Um, now to my surprise, I figured the battery on this was gonna be soldered in. It looks like it's just in a removable slot, which is great. So it does uh, have 0, 07 of 8 and 9 on there, so it is the original battery. So let's get that guy out right now. As you can see, this battery is actually in good shape, except the fact that it doesn't hold the charge anymore. But it has not began to explode or anything, but still for good measure, we don't want it leaking out all over the board while this is uh, not being used. So we'll go ahead and leave that out. And we'll have to uh, do another video on putting that battery back in. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the computer now without the battery in it. And get it back to the way it was. As you can see, again, very clean. Really any dust on here. These front chips are the memory sims. That's the main processor there. I'm not good at IDing all these chips like uh, some guys are. I know what the processor is, what the RAM is, and there's other assorted controllers, real-time clocks, all that kind of fun stuff on this board. And some kind of a uh, expansion slot. Motherboard is back in. Let's go ahead and reconnect the uh, connectors. So when you're reassembling things, and when you take them apart, try to remember where you unplug stuff from, because the connector for the uh, floppy disk port, I uh, don't know which one I unplugged it from. So uh, hopefully it's the right one. I noticed on the inside on the motherboard there is a um, designation of upper drive versus lower drive. Since this is a hard drive model, it only has the lower floppy disk drive. So I plugged the connector back into there. I nearly forgot to put this uh, bracket back on. Don't drop the screw inside when you're putting this back together. All right, so now with this bracket back on, we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, metal shield on the bottom here. That should go on pretty simple. And there it goes. And we'll go ahead and put the back case back on. It pretty much just drops right back on most part. Right, so we got one screw back in. Go ahead and get this other one back in here. As far as getting these deep ones to go, best advice I can give is just to kind of carefully drop them back in where they go and screw them back in and just make sure you're not cross threading it. That's the case reassembled. Back together again. So we'll go ahead and get a new one of these guys and uh, replace this as soon as we can. Right now, don't get a word about any kind of possible battery leakage on the logic board or motherboard while we're waiting for that. And of course, to test it, we'll make sure it still turns on.
looks like we're still okay. If, the, if you did find the video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.